Hi, I'm Mark, and this is Foothill Paint Fabrication. Today we are going to be back on the 50 Chevy truck. We have uh, the renting boards today. Uh, they've been sandblasted, so we've got some work to do prep before we can spray any etching primer on them. But they've got some other damage here and there that we're going to work on. So let's jump right into it and uh, see what we can do. Okay, let's take a look at the running boards real quick. They've been sandblasted, they have some flash rust on them, but we're gonna sand the whole uh, area anyways to make sure that they're prepped and ready for etching primer. Now, these are in excellent condition. I haven't seen running boards this nice on this old of a truck in a long time. A little bit of a crease right here we're gonna have to remove, and we got a little dip right over here, uh, maybe the truck bottomed out or something, that'll be easy to fix. And then we're gonna go through and get some of these spot welds. Um, you got a few. Uh, one right here that's kind of sticking up and I'll get the little die grinder out or something to knock those down So they're not unattractive uh, We're not going to go in and make these perfect. That's not this kind of paint job like I keep reminding myself But all in all these are in excellent condition So let's uh, let's get that dent knocked out and see what we can do with the rest of it Okay, so on this one uh, what we have is uh, some sort of little crease here and it only runs from about here to here and it actually, the line here is very straight. Uh, this, this line didn't really get pushed in. It actually took the dent right in the center of it. Uh, it bolts on right here, and uh, it's just kind of surprising it didn't fold this all the way in. It may have, and somebody may have pulled it out previously. So this lip along here is a little wavy. Uh, we've got a little bit of hoop to do down here, but uh, this is the main concern. So we're going to work on getting this dent pulled out right now. Okay, so the dent it, uh, goes from here to here. It's kind of a crease. It rolled this in a little bit, so we're going to bring that out. This has been bent up, but it looks like the dent went in this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to remove this area. I can't really get a hammer in there. So I just grabbed a piece of old rebar here, um, kind of tapered the end and smoothed off the corner so I don't drive a big dent in it. And I'm going to put this in here and just try to tap See if I can't get that to spread out a little bit. If I push this side out, I can always tap it back in. So while I'm hammering, I'm watching this area right here to see if it's actually coming out. And it is. This corner needs to be brought back out a little bit more. That's not bad. I'd like to get a little more out if I can, but I can't really get an, an angle on it to push back in this corner here. So now we have the dent from here to here to take out. And I'm just going to use a hammer and dolly on that. And I'm going to use a dolly off technique where uh, I have the dolly next to where I'm hammering, but not right on where I'm hammering. So let me uh, figure out a way where I can not block what I'm doing. I have to go left handed. Uh, I'm going to figure out how to do it right handed. It's coming out real nice. Okay, that feels pretty good. We still have a low spot right here. Let me see if I can get that out. And 
we got a spot right there that one we're having trouble reaching. Okay, the last thing to do is try to bend this. I'm going to check the other one. Pretty sure this is supposed to roll off like this, but if not, we're going to bend that back out straight. So we just took a look at the other one, and uh, this line is supposed to continue straight. So this has actually been bent down like that. So we're going to have to wrench this whole thing over. Uh, not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. I'm going to have to bring this sheet metal and that sheet metal at the same time and maybe may I just have to hammer on it. <clears throat> Drive this wedge in here. And then we'll use that to hold the sheet metal apart while we hammer it uh, back around. It's looking better. A couple more shots we should be doing. And that did it. So by putting that block in there that's uh, tapered to match this, I was able to put that in there and hammer on this and take them both at the same time instead of trying to pry one away. So that actually looks pretty good to me. We're going to uh, straighten out this lip all the way down. Uh, we got a little hoopty do down there and I'm going to hit this with a grinder. See how well I did on this repair as far as hammering up. I, I feel a couple of high spots from here or there, but we're going to see. And then, uh, then we'll know where we're at, where we stand. I may have to peck a few of those down, and then we're going to put a little body filler on it later. All right, let's hit it with a disc real quick and see how it looks. Okay, I can see right in here, it's low, a little warm, a little high spot there, a little bit low, but all in all not bad. I'm going to put a straight edge on this right here and here and check it for straightness and then we're going to tap those down and I'm going to try to try to get this brought back out a little bit more. Okay, we've got a couple of high spots I can see. Uh, this line is pretty straight now. This lip needs a little bit of work, so we're going to hold the dolly behind it and just hammer next to it. Then we got a couple of high spots here and there that the uh, grinder, a uh, sandy disc, exposed. One right there, and one right here. Let's hit it with sander again, see how it looks. Okay, so we'll take a straight edge, we'll lay it along right here, and that's perfect, so that's great. Um, Long hair looks really good, right on the roll. But I'm looking for any unusual high spots, so I think we're, we're going to rough this up and uh, put some body filler on it, and that should be good to go. 
The other dent we already uh, took care of. It was just a little bit of a roll dent. Uh, maybe a big boy stepped on the, uh, the running boards and put a little tweak in it. Other than that, this is about ready for body filler, so we're going to get that taken care of right away. Okay, we got those two dents taken out, so uh, they're ready for a quick skim coat of some body filler and sand it smooth before we spray the etching primer on. But before we can do that, we have to go through and get the steel prepped and ready for the etching primer. Now these were media blasted or sand blasted, I can't tell. Um, but they're not good, they're not ready for etching primer yet. They have to be thoroughly sanded to make sure all that uh, sand or media is removed and not stuck in the steel anywhere. Also, we want to make sure that we've removed any surface oxidization that may have happened. Even if you sandblast them and took them straight home, they still need to be sanded. You still need to try to smooth out some of those pits from the sandblasting or media blasting. And you want to make sure you physically uh, hit all the areas and to uh, smooth them out, rough them up, and expose nice clean bare steel that's ready for the etching primer to bite into. So I'm going to hit these with a DA, um, probably, I don't know what grit, probably 80 grit, and then I'll hand sand it between all these grooves by hand, and then I'll go over on the back side and I'll try to get a scotch bright pad or sandpaper down inside there as well. I'm not going to bore you with all that. It's just going to be DAing these real quick. Uh, once that's done, we'll get some body filler on those two little spots, get those moved out, and then they're going to be ready for etching primer. Okay, since these are so thin, we're going to be using some glazing putty on them. Start down here. Just a little bit. Super thin. This material is okay up to eighth of an inch and we're not nowhere near eighth of an inch thick in these repairs here. Try to scrape some of this out of this little lip right here because I don't want to have to sand it out of there. Stuff is pretty runny. I'll grab a paper towel and wipe that out. So if you get body filler down into a groove or something, you don't want to try to sand out. Grab a paper towel, get a little solvent on there, a little lacquer thinner. I'm doing this dry because this stuff is so runny. And then uh, just wipe it right out of there. Okay, we're about ready to shoot uh, the self-etching primer onto these uh, running boards. I got a couple little spots on the bed too as well. I'm going to do it all at once so I don't have to clean the gun twice. Um, I'm going to bring you in uh, close and show you a little bit of what I did for prep. Um, and then, uh, then we're getting some spraying done. Okay, to start off with, we repaired that dent that was over here. It came out pretty nice. Pretty happy with that. Had that little uh, dip over here. Once I pulled that straight, then it had a little bit of a kind of a strange shape to this, so I went ahead and uh, filled that. And then I wasn't going to do it, but there's some puckers on these corners uh, from stamping, so I went ahead and took those out as well. They're down super low, you really don't see them. Same thing on this side, just had that pucker out right there. Now, what I did on the spot welds, as you can see here, I just took my little die grinder with the 80 grit disc, and I knocked the tops off of them. I'm not trying to eliminate them completely. That's not this paint job. It's not a show car. So I just went and got the, the worst of them with uh, you know four or five coats of paint on them. They were less visible. So I want to make sure that uh, you know they look good. Now I wire wheeled these, sanded them, scuffed them, and sanded them again. So as you can tell, they're looking pretty clean. And that's what we want. So they've been blown off. I'm going to wipe them down with a tack rag. Let's mix up some uh, etching primer and get these things sprayed. Okay, we'll be using a self-etching primer today. This is a, uh, just a one component self-etching primer. What I used to use was a two component where it had a quart of uh, self-etching primer and then a quart of phosphoric acid. And you would mix it one to one, stir it up really well and spray it on and that would the acid would eat into the uh, base steel and pull I guess the, uh, the the primer in with it and then uh, the phosphoric acid would stop and then leave a nice bonded surface 
This I've never used before uh, that I can recall, so we're gonna give it a shot. It's the only thing available to me now. Uh, the other stuff is no longer available in my area from what I understand. So let's get this opened up, mixed up real well in the gun and start spraying. Okay, this material is super uh, thin. It's, it's just like, I mean, it's like solvent, it's so thin. So pouring it in the cup, I kind of made a mess here because it's so thin, it just wants to run back on it. But we're gonna go ahead and spray this on. Uh, it's calling for eight to 10 PSI at the gun, which I've already got it turned down that low. We'll set a medium small pattern. I got to spray the inside of the uh, one coat, good coat on the underside of the running boards. And then we're gonna let those dry a little bit. I'm gonna spray the bed, a couple, couple little spots on the bed and why those are drying. Then I'll flip them over and we'll get at least two good coats, if not three on the top side. All right, with this stuff, I'm just going to adjust the gun right on the part. It's just etching primer, so it doesn't really matter. So I'll get all the hard to reach areas first, make sure I get the gun way up inside there, and then I'll do the easy spots. Now if you notice sometimes I'll be holding the gun at an angle like this, you have to figure out if you hold it a certain way, the air to make the pattern actually causes the paint not to go into the, the, the crevice you're trying to hit. So if you turn the gun at an angle, it'll actually carry it in and the air will blow back out instead of just rebounding. Okay, this stuff's super runny, but it dries really quick. We're gonna try to get as many coats on here as we can. I'll just get to use up the whole cork. Uh, we're gonna let it dry completely, and then we're gonna scuff it later before primer goes on. Um, some etching primers, they'll give you the option or they'll tell you wet on wet, meaning they want you to spray the etching primer, let it flash off so many minutes, maybe 30 minutes, and then spray your sealer or your primer directly over it without scuffing. I prefer, uh, over the years, I've found that I get a better adhesion if I let the etching primer flash off and dry a few days, then scuff it with a scotch Brite pad, uh, dust it off, and then put my primer or my sealer over the top. Um, it seems to work better for me.
got a little heavy handed there, so I'm holding it up to make sure it doesn't run down that wall. Okay, here they are. We got three good coats on top, two coats on the bottom. We're going to let these sit a few days, then we'll uh, get them scuffed and get some primer on them. They turned out really well. Okay, that wraps up this video on the running boards for the 50 Chevy truck. They were sandblasted. We uh, knocked out some dents, filled some dents, uh, straightened them out a little bit, very little. And then uh, sanded them, wire wheeled them, sanded them, sanded them again, and uh, got them prepped for etching primer. And uh, I think they came out really well. These things are in remarkable condition for being 70 years old. Uh, the family's really taken care of this truck over all these years. So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And mash that bell icon so you get notifications every time I release a new video.